This is Dr. Andrew Bateman. Welcome to Beyond 2020, a project of the Nebraska Optometric Association. All right, welcome to the Beyond 2020 podcast with our guest uh, this for today, for Amber Pankinen, uh, registered dietitian here in Lincoln, as well as now a, um, a licensed chef. How would you how do you describe that? Personal chef. Personal chef, excellent. Um, and now teaching classes at Southeast Community College. That's um, right. You know, one of the, the goals of this podcast is to be able to give information to patients that they can use in their daily lives as far as health of their eyes is, and whole body health. Um, and as optometrists, uh, a lot of people don't realize we deal with a lot of systemic health diseases that manifest in the back of the eyes. Um, and we all try to give advice based on nutrition to patients, and, and that is not necessarily our world. So we thought it'd be a good idea to have somebody who knew what they were talking about on <laughs> about this subject. So welcome, and thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, one of the first things I wanted to talk about with you is most of the diseases we have to deal with are kind of long-term diseases. So whether it's macular degeneration, which is a 30 to 40 year long disease, or diabetes is, is uh, hopefully, if somebody can get under control, maybe not a 30 to 40 year disease, but a lot of times it goes on forever. Um, you know, in your world, in terms of, of thinking of, of cooking and nutrition, what do you think are some of the biggest keys for patients to understand for, for like life skills or lifetime of good health? I think this is really tricky because I know as a dietitian and a chef, I like to eat with my eyes, but I know that I should be eating for my eyes. So I think folks just need to keep in mind, it's really about balancing what's on that plate. So making sure we're getting lots of colorful food on that plate, plenty of fresh fruits and vegetables, some lean protein, whole grains, maybe some low fat dairy, uh, because you know, again, a healthy diet, as we've seen in the research, can help with really quality of life and longevity and also reducing the risk of chronic disease. Oh, excellent. So, so one great question, you mentioned color. Okay, mm -hmm. so when it comes to macular degeneration, we try to talk with our patients uh, about uh, two components called lutein and zeaxanthin. Yes. Um, found in many vegetables right. and things like that. But one question I get from patients then all the time is about carrots <laughs> and if carrots can help the eyes. Mm -hmm. um, so what do, you, what do you know about carrots in the eyes? Right, well, so all three of those are similar, right? They're, they're related. So with lutein and zeaxanthin, those two are phytochemicals that, as you know, can help prevent uh, macular degeneration. And they're found in a variety of foods, so dark leafy green veggies, where vitamin A or beta carotene, right, that, that's actually... Um, a form of vitamin A. So that's found in those colorful orange vegetables, right? So carrots and of course, sweet potato, uh, even some of our bell peppers, right? Those can contain beta carotene. And with vitamin A, we know that that can prevent night blindness, also dry eye. So, uh, right. I mean, it's important to get, to get both because they both have unique characteristics and, and health benefits. I think, I think the one with the, uh, the vitamin beta carotene specifically, a lot of patients come in and they think, oh, if I'm gonna eat carrots, that means it's gonna like change my prescription or if my eyes are getting worse. And it's always kind of hard to express the idea that it, it helps with the reception of light in the back of the eye. So sure. kind of that night blindness, like you mentioned, or adjusting from light to dark mm -hmm. um, and what we call contrast sensitivity. So uh, being able to tell differences as somebody develops cataracts and things like that, we wanna try to, keep their contrast sensitivity as high as possible. So, um, and then on the lutein and zeaxanthin side of things within the, the macula itself. Um, so I also have patients that ask, okay, if I have to choose between like a spinach or a kale, is there really any difference between the two of them? Do, do we really know if, you know, as long as it's got good green leafy leaves, are we doing the right thing? Or do we have to be picky about exactly what we're eating? The one that you will eat, that's the answer. <laughs> you know, kale, I know it can turn people off. Uh, where spinach, I think, is a little more versatile, right, for folks, you can cook your greens. So this is also a recommendation because vitamin A is a fat-soluble vitamin. And so in order to absorb vitamin A, we need a little fat in order to do that and do it well. So if you can cook your kale, I know I do that, I'll you know, cook my kale up and toss that in with pasta or put that on a salad. Uh, so that's a good way to, to get those dark leafy greens in. 
Uh, another one I hear from patients is, um, can I eat this in a smoothie? Is there any difference if you chop it up and blend it up? You know, it, is it still good for you as a smoothie? Um, and I kind of was interested in this also because I've read some things that some people are like, oh, you shouldn't chop this stuff up. And then others like, oh, it's the same thing. It goes in your mouth, you know? So what kind of, where, where is it at with that in terms of prepping food? Sure. I, again, I'll, I'll just say whatever you will eat, right? I mean, I don't think in terms of whether it's chopped or, uh, you know, you're already eating it in your mouth, right? You're beginning that process of digestion in the mouth with your teeth. Uh, regardless, you're going to get those nutrients. So to me, it doesn't really matter, uh, just as long as you're actually getting those nutrients in. Perfect, perfect. Um, vitamins and supplements are something you and I have kind of just talked about randomly in <laughs> passing before. Um, you know, as, as far as looking for something other than food, because some people don't feel like cooking. Um, Which is really sad to me. Yeah, you know, it, it's always a tough, when patients ask me that, I'm not sure, you know, I, I always tell them, well, I, I think you should probably try try to cook the food as opposed to eat it in a vitamin. But is there is there a good vitamin source outside of just eating good, healthy food? Or um, is there something somebody can eat if they're not good at cooking or not able to, to prep the food the way they need to? Sure. Well, I, again, I think the best sorts of nutrients is going to be those whole foods. So if you can cook, right, and if you can get whole foods, that's probably the best. But even if you can't cook, when you think about all of those fruits and vegetables that you don't have to cook in order to eat. So that's super simple. Uh, when it comes to vitamins and supplements, I'm a little more picky, yeah. right? I know you and I have had this conversation and you've recommended supplements to me, which have been helpful by the way. Yeah, so uh, that can be a good thing, but I would be picky again, because we know supplements aren't regulated. So, you know, make sure you look for those verification labels from those companies or organizations that can tell you, right, this is verified and what's actually in the bottle is in the bottle. Sure. So, yeah. Sure. Well, very good. Um, I think another issue with patients that I, I don't know exactly how to answer is, is the idea of, okay, what diet should I do? And, and in my mind, not having your background, I, my instinct is to say, well, it's not necessarily about a special diet, whether it's keto or whole 30 or whatnot. Uh, we do know that, um, macular degeneration is an inflammatory type disease and dry eye is an inflammatory type disease. So, so what do you think though about the difference of just habit changes as opposed to this diet that you hear or read about somewhere, you know, what's, how do you know what's the right way to go there? How to look at those things if you're starting out trying to take better care of yourself? Sure. So I think if we were going to define the word diet, diet is what you eat, <laughs> right? So it's about finding the pattern, I think, of foods that work for you. And I don't love elimination diets in terms of eliminating whole food groups. Uh, because again, you know, if you're doing a low carbohydrate diet, like a keto or a paleo, you're going to probably reduce those fruits and vegetables, which we know are so important for eye health. So I think if you can, again, think about getting half that plate, fruits and veggies, getting that lean protein in, those whole grains, your low fat dairy, just an all around healthy balanced plate, I think is going to be best. Excellent, yeah, I, I always struggle, a patient comes in and tells me they're, you know, they're starting this uh, keto diet or something like that and, and going back to the little bit of nutrition schooling I had that talked about ketoacidosis and sure. how, what that does to people over time, right. you know. And, um, some of the, some of my patients that really need to do something fast, you know, I'll, I'll kind of encourage them to look up more information about that, but mm -hmm. it's hard to get that idea of, Maybe for short term, this is okay, but really long term, it's it's figuring out how to right. how to best take care of yourself from a, right. a habit changing standpoint. So, right. um, you know, one of the one of the questions or, or comments, I guess, that we'll get from patients is, so how are you doing with your diabetes? Well, you know, it's um, it's doing better. We we changed my medication. We upped my medication and that took care of took care of the issue I was having, you know, with the blood sugar. And so um, then I go back to, well, what are you doing, you know, at home to to try to fix that? And and a lot of patients' responses are, oh, that's, that's really hard, you know? And, and the one thing I wanted to ask you about today, if you had any tips for people, is, is about meal planning and, and kind of planning that time it takes to make those meals for a week, especially for a younger family that's busy or whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. any, any advice or tips for people for that? Sure. So 
if, you're, if we are looking at diabetes, are those folks who have type 2 diabetes uh, or pre-diabetes, I think consistent a consistent schedule in terms of eating, so your meal timing throughout the day is also important when it comes to meal planning. Uh, the other thing, I think you don't have to make it complicated. You know, of course you can do some prep on the weekends, but again, go back to the fundamentals of get those fruits and vegetables in, get your protein in. Uh, and of course, you know, you can plan a few days in advance. I, it's fine to outsource too, right? So if you have to go out for a meal or do to go, uh, you can still make healthy choices when you're choosing those options. Sure. So just figuring out again, what works for you and your schedule. Uh, it may not always uh, be the best choice, but maybe it's the better choice at that moment. So, so yeah, the importance of water with, with regards to uh, the body in general, but we, we talk about a lot with dry eyes and trying to, to maintain that because now we have these lives where we're on computers, we're reading all the time, you know. Uh, we even talk about it with kids. They, they used to learn on chalkboards, at least when we were in school, then marker boards, now smart boards. But those at least were at distance. And, and when it comes to dry eyes, our blink rate reduces from 22 blinks a minute down to about six. So trying to stay hydrated and trying to, um, to have strategies for that. Is there any difference between trying to drink a 32 ounce glass of water because you're behind versus like having a 12 ounce glass of water that you kind of continually sip throughout the day? Or can you make up for that lost time by trying to drink a, a whole container? Well, the amount of water that you need every day is very unique to you. So it's hard to take just a general water recommendation and apply that to every single person. So again, it's really about your, uh, your current weight, your age, your activity levels will influence hydration. Uh, but keep in mind that you can actually get hydration from your food. So again, going back to those fruits and vegetables, I mean, they're mostly water. So even if you don't get, you know, the amount of water that you think you should get in every day, if you're eating those fruits and vegetables, that's definitely going to help. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so another issue I kind of wanted to address was if we're sitting there in a, with a patient in the chair and we're talking to them about their diabetes or their macular degeneration, and, and they really have no starting point. So um, not just within Lincoln, but um, what are resources for for optometrists or patients to be able to go um, seek out as far as uh, help with different disease states for cooking or meal planning? Um, you know, where do you find a nutritionist or who do you go to to learn how to cook better? You know, what, what kind of things should people look for? Sure. So I would recommend visiting with a registered dietitian versus a nutritionist. Uh, registered dietitians in the state of Nebraska are licensed medical nutrition therapists. So we're licensed to give you advice about health and nutrition versus a nutritionist may not have that same education or background. So registered dietitians in the state of Nebraska, oh my goodness, there's probably 600 of us in the state. So, uh, you know, you can visit eatrightnebraska.org in order to find a dietitian in your city or your community. Uh, but really, uh, dietitians are similar in the, in the sense that you know, they can pick special areas that they practice in. So we have certain dietitians who are more familiar with diabetes or macular degeneration who can work with you to figure out what's a good overall eating plan for you and taking into account your medical history, your current lifestyle, and other things that we need to keep in mind. Can, do you, are you aware, can patients get a, like a, a prescription from a doctor? Like, is there, is there any um, movement in terms of, of getting help like that covered by insurance? I, and again, I have no idea, so this is, a, <laughs> this is right. a question. You know, in the past, this is interesting, in the past, services by dietitians have not been covered by insurance, but we have seen some changes within the last year, and I think we're going to continue to see more changes, especially with telehealth and COVID. Uh, we're working on some things right now, uh, so hopefully those services will become more available. Excellent. Are there are there resources for like cooking classes? I am making this up, but does like Nebraska Extension do cooking classes or, or where would somebody look to learn how to be a better mm -hmm. chef? Extension is a great uh, resource for nutrition information. When it comes to cooking, I mean, Great Plains Culinary Institute 
at Southeast Community College is also a wonderful resource, uh, just considering the experience of the folks that are on staff there. And, uh, you know, we offer a lot of community events as well. So you can look for those continuing education classes. There's always something new. So in different cuisines that you can learn how to cook, which I think is really fun. At any of the other community college systems within Nebraska, are you, are there in outstate Nebraska, are there any uh, culinary setups in those too? I, you know, Metro in Omaha would be another one. I'm not familiar with maybe some of the other sure. schools in terms of what they offer to the community. Sure, but, excellent. Yeah. Very good. Um, well, if we were going to lay out a, li a simple list for people to be aware of or to start with. You know, I, I think from the I side of things, the, the beginning of that list for me that I start with patient wise is, is spinach, mm -hmm. kale, uh, blueberries, right. um, orange peppers. I mean, red and green peppers are great too, but the orange peppers have a little bit higher concentration. Are there, is there kind of a, an easy list of, of vegetables and meats? Like if a person wanted a cut out first two weeks, I'm getting started with this. <laughs> These are the things I'm gonna go buy at the grocery store. What would you, kind of what sure. direction would you point them? Well, I like your list. You All did right. a good job. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I would also add eggs right. to that list. So as you probably know, eggs are a good source of lutein. And there's been some pretty good research in terms of looking at lutein consumption over time and how that can actually help reduce the age-related macular degeneration. So there was a study done where uh, they looked at folks who were eating eggs or one egg a day for five weeks and how that raised lutein levels, but didn't raise serum cholesterol levels. So there's not going to be concern there. I know some folks still buy into that whole myth uh, with eggs and cholesterol, but yeah, eggs are a great one to add to the list. Your fruits and vegetables, of course, the ones you already mentioned, also strawberries because again of the vitamin C, sure. right? Which acts as an antioxidant. Uh, and then I, we mentioned kale, we mentioned spinach, sweet potatoes. I was thinking that there was one more I was going to mention, but now I forgot. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, the, the lutein and zeaxanthin, um, when I talk to patients about that, that's kind of like the, the building blocks of, of our macular protection system. And so um, it helps process the cells as they break down and, and remove them from the, uh, the back of the eye or the pigment in the back of our eye does right. that. And so lutein and zeaxanthin help to support the health of that pigment um, back there. And so um, that can also help with some contrast uh, testing. So as far as your night vision and, and mm -hmm. things like that. So we try to point people in the direction of where they can kind of get those high, high dosages of it. And um, you read things too about uh, chickens that feed on like marigolds and things like that as having even more lutein in, sure. in, in the egg yolk. But um, when you look at like a, a farm raised egg and it's got that like nice kind of more orange yolk versus a, a store bought egg from like a, a large processing place, um, is there really much difference between like a, a lutein makeup that's measurable or does it, does it matter? Do you need to really pay attention to that or not? It's not going to be significant, right? And you know, some of that pigment that you're seeing also too in the egg is how you're cooking it <laughs> and the freshness of the egg or the breed of the hen. So we have to keep that in mind too. The other thing I was going to add to that list though, Drew, was nuts and seeds and also seafood because of the omega-3s. And this is something that I know we've talked about in terms of helping with dry eye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think a lot of the patients, when we talk about um, omega-3s, fish oil, those kind of things, um, we're usually talking about the oil component of their tears. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, in their mind, it's like, oh, this is going to put more oil into my eyes, so then I'm going to get, and it's, it's really actually more about the anti-inflammatory part of the omega-3s. So um, can you give us a little rundown of how, what the anti-inflammatory part is for omega-3? Like, is that, is that what omega-3s are about when it comes to anti-cholesterol or lowering, lowering cholesterol? Is it about mm -hmm. inflammation? Essentially, yes. And so, you know, we've seen omega-3s tied to, again, vision health, brain health, heart health. So, again, all of the above with the anti-inflammatory properties. But it's hard to get good seafood around here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Out here in the middle, right? <laughs> 
out of the river. <laughs> That's right. Well, I, I think I don't want folks to feel bad if you have to go get canned tuna or salmon because honestly, like that will be a, a source of your omega threes. So, you know, balance that out, right? Maybe with some veggies on the side. Nuts and seeds are another great source of omega threes. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Amber, this has been great information. I really appreciate you taking time to join us uh, tonight and, and uh, look forward to hearing more from you as you're teaching the, uh, the classes on cooking and, and cooking for disease, I believe, was something I read that was in, in the announcement that you had uh, about that. So congratulations and uh, thanks for being here. Special thanks to the Nebraska Optometric Association, its executive director, Dave McBride, Beyond 2020 producer, Christian Anderson with Right Eye Digital, Parsons Public Relations, and our guest, Amber Pankinen. Look for the latest episode of Beyond 2020 at bettereyecarenebraska.com on the NOA YouTube channel and all of your favorite podcast platforms. Also, follow us on Facebook. If you have questions, please contact us at Nebraska Optometric Association. Until next time, thanks for watching and listening.